Last big thing, and it's genuinely the most interesting plot thread of what's going on in this short transitionary phase of the Succession War, is Hulkenberg abandoning his main body and resolving with all of himself, his Nen, and his energy to win the Succession War whatever way he sees fit, which is abandoning any sense of morality, emotion, or care that he originally had in his old life and becoming this new Hulkenberg, this new Emperor of Kakin, Emperor of Democracy, as we hope that he will remember this is what he wants to achieve out of all of this, doing whatever he can, whatever is possible with his Nen ability to achieve a victory. Because right now, as we were just talking about how the chaos between Morena Prudo, the Haley family, and the Phantom Troop and the potential all-out war that's being orchestrated by the other two Mafia families. The big thing that's storming the lower tiers like a plague right now is the announcement of the death of Prince Hulkenberg. Last chapter, it was a little bit of a setup, but now we know for sure that Balsamico was possessed by Hulkenberg. And not just that, we, we already knew that. Balsamico employed the toxic poison to Hulkenberg's body regardless of Hulkenberg taking advantage of his possession arrow. Taking all possibility and probability into account, after the short experimentation that he did in the previous usage, which we saw him use on Shikaku, who was Prince Benjamin's soldier, and Sumidori, who was his original Hulkenberg supporter, Hulkenberg concluded that while Sumidori was possessing Shikaku, the soul of Shikaku was unable to awaken as long as Sumidori the Hulkenberg supporter, was forever pledging their loyalty to the prince and being willing to sacrifice their original body for the cause. Hulkenberg surmises that his possession arrow works off of the undying loyalty of his followers, but not off of that just undying loyalty, but of their willingness to sacrifice their original body, their original life as it is, to carry on in this new body. Using that method, using that understanding of his Nen ability, he was able to realize and even achieve the fullest effect of what his then ability thrived off of. Hulkenberg is legitimately killing his original body, getting rid of his original vessel and saying, I do not need that anymore. The succession war dictates that death is the loss. Death is the end. Most likely means body and soul. Who cares about my body? If I can win the succession war with just my soul, that's all Hulkenberg needs to carry on and that's all Hulkenberg needs to achieve the dream of democracy that he sees for the Kakken Empire. Even if that means going through multiple different followers' bodies and using their vessels as sacrifices or going from possession arrow to possession arrow to possession arrow with no potential end in sight and no comfortable vessel to stay within forever. Hulkenberg is willing to take all of those risks at heart and shoot towards not just Benjamin, but to every single sibling that he has to win this by any means necessary, even if that means he may fail and die. Because after performing another experiment, they were, which is why Shikaku actually took the gun to his head and took himself out because they were trying to figure out what happened to the soul after that, after that target body died. They determined that the original soul only returns to the original body if it has a body to return to. Because Sumidori was still alive when Shikaku took themselves out, Sumidori's soul went back to Sumidori's body. But if the target soul returns to its, if the, if that body is dead, that target soul that's just wandering will return to its original body and it overrides the possessing soul. Long story short, what that means is because Hulkenberg's body is dead, that means that once Hulkenberg's body officially dies and the effects wear off, Balsamico's original soul will stop inheriting that corpse and return to Balsamico's original body. Pushing Hulkenberg out, Balsamico will be normal again. Now, Hulkenberg's soul will reside in the body, but Balsamico will retain priority, meaning Hulkenberg will never see the light of day again. Imagine the scene from Get Out where he's just floating in the abyss watching Balsamico live his life. Obviously, that would mean complete failure for Hulkenberg. So that means Hulkenberg has legitimately only one option now that his original body is dying of the poison. Something that may, again, as we've theorized multiple times over, may create a post-mortem Nen contract between Hulkenberg's soul and his dying body. And if that's the case, 
that might just be the boost in power that he needs to not only use possession arrow while within balsamico but use it without any of his supporters being present because we know hulkenberg's possession arrow relies on the nen of all of his supporters clouded around him and combining to shoot hulkenberg is in balsamico away in only the quarters of room 1001 with benjamin that may not be the case so post-mortem nen may be the only thing that saves hulkenberg here in his plan the fact that hulkenberg is willing to sacrifice people his own people shows how resolved he is and how changed of a man hulkenberg actually is after having that discussion with nasubi his father and realizing that the only way he'll be able to achieve his dream is by fighting through the succession war and not averting it or avoiding it and doing everything he can to stop it hulkenberg really did become this new person and the fact that becoming this new person was able to awaken a nen ability so fast in him shows the amount of potential he has not just as a competent human and a competent hunter and a competent nen user but as a very full-fledged king as someone that understands the the burden of royalty the burden of leading your citizens and the sacrifices and the people you may need to step on in order to make those make those decisions those tough executive decisions and while i can say that it's respectable at the same time it also shows that hulkenberg really isn't any different than the father that he's trying to replace as no matter what way you need to look at it whether he says that at the end of this he wants to be better than his father hulkenberg cannot deny the fact that in order to be quote unquote better than his father he needs to become his father whatever way nasubi hugo ro uh, whatever he did to win his succession war contest hulkenberg may not be that different from his father as much as he likes to believe he is i do love that theory but i and, and i definitely think that there is a lot going on between sarodnik and hulkenberg there is no coincidence that these two princes would be the only two princes that are essentially on good terms in the higher up princes sure you have kacho and fugetsu and none, none of the other princes are like evil to each other per se but hulkenberg is very vocal that sir Rodnik is the only prince that loves him and accepts him as a sibling and i've made a video already talking about how hulkenberg and sir Rodnik's nen abilities and their guardian spirit beasts are almost in direct opposition to each other Sir Rodnik's future sight and all of the different Nen abilities that he gets from his Guardian Spirit Beast are almost completely overrided by Hulkenberg's possession arrow that ignores all defensive and offensive Hatsu and just shoots right through and possesses one. And, you know, Hulkenberg's Guardian Spirit Beast was shown to protect him from bullets similar to, you know, Star Platinum, similar to his JoJo stand. So who knows what the Guardian Spirit Beast ability is in and of itself. So these two characters, I think, are definitely posed to run into each other. I don't think Hulkenberg's journey is ending anytime soon. Because again, even though Hulkenberg's first target is of course going to be Benjamin, after confirming the death of his original body and the fact that his mother, Unma, is in cahoots with him and is going to be more than willing to cover up the autopsy, it's going to immediately complete Balsamico's mission for Benjamin, which will allow Balsamico to immediately return to Benjamin's side. Even though Hulkenberg has spelled out the exact reason why this plan shouldn't work by using sedatives to keep the original Balsamico's soul from awakening after Hulkenberg dies, he gives himself about 10 hours or so in order to get close enough to Benjamin where Hulkenberg can shoot an arrow and possess Benjamin whether this be a permanent thing or not because we already know that after taking control of benjamin balsamico's soul will return to his body or depending on how long those sedatives are balsamico might get knocked out giving benjamin just enough time to just kill balsamico or be and, and he can easily be like oh hulkenberg possessed him it was a trick and now benjamin has full control of first prince of the cock and empire which is a big move and if hulkenberg is able to even control Benjamin's Zen ability, Benjamin Matan, or Benjamin's Guardian Spirit Beast. Who knows if Benjamin's Guardian Spirit Beast can protect him from Possession Arrow because this might be a much bigger Nen battle than I'm making it seem. Don't let, let my glossing over make it seem like it's an easy diff for Hulkenberg. If, let's say, this plan does work and Hulkenberg is able to take over Benjamin, imagine Kurap Karapika's biggest fears of martial law being enacted, but not through Benjamin, literally through Hulkenberg. 
because again, it can't be stressed enough how much of a win con using martial law and making everyone quarantine in their rooms and just giving Hulkenberg, who again can just shoot possession arrows through walls, the perfect opportunity to take out multiple princes at once. We've already we already know this man can can collateral damage quick scope his arrow. I don't want to see him do it. <laughs> That's why them taking each other out would be very poetic. The only reason I'm I'm unclear if uh, they'd be willing to take each other out is because how resolved Hulkenberg is to actually win and bring about the change he wants to see in the Kaken Empire. While I wouldn't put it past the old Hulkenberg to find an end to the succession war that resolved peacefully, which would be one, taking out the evil that is Sarodnik. Let's say if they're the last two members of the succession war and they both take themselves out together in a draw, that can put the succession war into an end that would and may enact the change Hulkenberg wants to see. I don't know if that would create democracy though, because the reason why Hulkenberg had to fight in the succession war, because I got a lot of comments that were asking if Possession Arrow can work on Cock and Princes. Why doesn't Hulkenberg just shoot Nasubi with the Possession Arrow and end the Succession War right then and there? I assume this is the same answer. Hulkenberg, this new Hulkenberg needs to win the Succession War, is going to play the rules of the Succession War and change the Cock and Empire by winning it and becoming the king that way. The old Hulkenberg would have used Possession Arrow to fire on Nasubi, take control of it, and end the war that way. But that old Hulken Hulkenberg didn't awaken Possession Arrow. Hulkenberg only awakened Possession Arrow the moment he resolved to take the Succession War seriously. So I think that that is why Hulkenberg wouldn't want to find a amicable end to the Succession War. At this point, he's winning it all or nothing. And I think the same can be said for his equal, his brother, the only one that accepts him, Sarodnik, because we do cut at the very end of the chapter to every remaining prince that's left as they watch the announcement of Hulkenberg's death. And as we cut to Sarodnik, who is just cutting the time down between his Zetsu uses to insane amounts of levels of time. Even Salkov is un in disbelief of the amount of potential this man has. He's cut down his time between Zetsu from 10 seconds to now three seconds and he's cutting it just trying to do his best to cut it down to one second which if you're not picking up what i'm putting down means that this man is going to be able to close his eyes and enact zetsu and potentially go and activate his future sight and end ability every other second his cooldown is going to be next to absolutely nothing and his drive that utter devotion to finding the solution to the problem that he needs it's it's almost sickening. It's almost uncomparable to anything that Salkov has ever been able to see or, or even begin to comprehend. And I think with this next page here, I don't think it's a coincidence that we see Sarodnik with the young Netero ponytail sporting that sleeveless outfit, putting his hands together into something that looks just like a volleyball. This man is the beyond Netero child. You can't convince me otherwise unmistakable i mean you can't make you can't make that up you can't make that up how much of a direct reference that is to volume 27 that panel and 12, volume 27 up next to each other are the exact same i'm convinced now now you can't convince me otherwise it has to be the case now while there are other while there are other really good candidates like prince Mariam, prince hulkenberg has an insane amount of nen and I do want to discount the fact that um, a lot of people are thinking that it has to be either Benjamin or Camilla or a, 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 a Nen user before getting on the boat. I don't believe that is the case. While the six sacrificial lambs were all cursed at birth, I don't think the cock and prince in Beyond Netero's plan had to be cursed to the same degree that the other sacrificial lambs were. So they may not have awakened Nen at birth. Although if that's the case, I mean, that could point direction in Prince Wobble because who knows what that aura was when entering the the boat but i will say this man i've never seen anyone look more like a young netero in my life let alone the kind of netero-esque drive we see when beyond netero was taking 50 years to build a voyage to the dark continent or isaac netero was spending years devoting himself to the 1000 punch bot at sattva like, this man is undeniably the most 
insanely high potential Nen user that may exist. And I'm tired of pretending like he's not. If he's not the Netero child, I don't know who is. I mean, I do. Like I said, I, there are really good, you know, options besides Sarodnik, but it's undoubtable. Wait, Hulkenberg's arrow can bypass Sari turning on Future Sight right away? It potentially could. It ignores and null and voids all, all Nen abilities to get to its target. Whether Sarodnik is then able to use Future Sight and avoid Possession Arrow, especially with this one second cooldown, it's unsure. Legit thought we got a Netero flashback scene, and I'm telling you, even if Hulkenberg possessed the King, the Secession War couldn't end because it's a huge Nen contract. Exactly. Even if he did that, that wouldn't cause anything. Calling an end to the Succession War wouldn't really stop the problem. And every, I'm pretty sure a lot of these princes already getting a taste for blood would go after their other princes for succession regardless of the war taking place or not officially. Do you think we'll see Tyson's punishment for Taboo before she's gone? Who knows? Uh, Tyson is like someone that's definitely most likely, you know, to go next. I, I, it wouldn't surprise me if they were one of the next princes to go.